Hey Falcon fans, I'm Thomas Moth. Welcome to Atlanta Falcons Today. We have a mailbag video coming up this weekend, which is literally just a couple of days away. Hump day means we're halfway there. Go down below, use the hashtag Falcons to ask any sort of Falcon-related question as we, of course, approach uh, basically the midway point in the season. Falcons at 4-4. Four and four. Could be a lot worse. Could be better, but at least they're in a position to go ahead and possibly make the playoffs. So ask me your questions down below right now using the hashtag Falcons. All right, so I want to start with a little bit of news that I wouldn't really expect to begin with here on a random Wednesday on November 10th, and that is a, a, a player being cut. And you go, Thomas, like, normally players that are cut right now are basically no-name players. And even though it's not necessarily, like, you know, a massive name, not like they cut Deion Jones, they went ahead and still cut a linebacker who you will recognize because he's played a lot over the past two years, and that is Jacob Tuati Mariner, the outside linebacker slash kind of a little bit of pass rusher, but more of an outside linebacker who really came on in 2020. He's a really good player in 2020 overall, but JTM's playing time has really regressed over the past couple of weeks, and that has to do with the fact that James Vodders, who had the big sack, strip sack of Trevor Simeon this past week, um, he's been playing a lot more after emerging from the practice squad. And so, honestly, as we look into this, it makes a lot more sense than the initial headline that I kind of went, wait, why are they cutting him in the middle of the season? It's not like they need to save money, and yet it was the playing time that kind of wanted to create an extra roster spot, and so in the end, it does make sense. Here is the Falcoholics write-up on this, and they did a pretty darn good job of giving us a little insight into um, why they went ahead and made this cut today. Quote, I'll be surprised about this one for a while. Twenty Mariner won NFC Defensive Player of the Week honors once in 2020 and has the dual advantages of being young and affordable, so he figured to be have a role in this defense in 2021 as the team tried to sort out who would be contributing in the future. Instead, in spite of two sacks and limited playing time, JTM's increasingly, fa increasingly found himself on the outside looking in as a part-time player and ultimately healthy scratch in this outside linebacker group. It was evidence that James Vodders and Brandon Copeland had passed him on the depth chart and that rookie A.A. Ade, uh, I always mess up his last name, Agunjade, I think that's his last name, is going to be, is going to continue to have a major role. So with Dante Fowers' return looming, it appears the Falcons were comfortable moving on, end quote. And he's absolutely right about this. The main focus here is not that J, uh, JTM has been playing poorly. He did have two sacks this year. It's more for the fact that they have other guys in front of him who they want to see really play. Like, at this point with the Falcons' defense, especially from the linebacker, pass rusher, outside linebacker position, you'd much less do what Vodders and Copeland can bring to the, to the table going forward. Because what the Falcons need to figure out uh, right now, besides, you know, of course, winning football games is who's going to be on this team in 2022. Because there are going to be a lot of changes in 2022 and a lot of new additions brought in, not only from the NFL draft, but also from free agency as well, as Atlanta looks to have a little bit of cap space to have some wiggle room. And so, really, they're trying to figure out are are these younger outside linebackers slash pass rushers like Vodders, who I'm very high on, talked about him uh, in our breakdown video on Monday. Is he really going to be someone you can count on in the future, or is it just kind of a one-hit wonder with his sack and, you know, a good play? He was the highest-rated pro football-focused defensive player for the Falcons on Sunday. Was that a fluke, or is he actually someone to go ahead uh, and get on the football field? So JTM, again, being let go is a little bit of a surprise today because he's a name that we all recognize uh, if you watch the Falcons the past couple of years, especially in 2020. He had a really good year. I think it was early on in the season, although it's all kind of blending together at this point. But he has been released and uh, will go to the waiver wire and then can, of course, uh, sign with any football team. And I'm sure someone's going to go ahead and definitely pick him. Up. Be a pinned comment down below. Answer this during the ad break. Are you surprised by the JTM uh, cutting today? Are you surprised that they let him go, even though there are some better options behind him, in my opinion? If you're surprised, type Y down below for yes. If you're not, type N down below for no. Let's move over here to another defensive player, perhaps the best defensive player on the Atlanta Falcons, and that, of course, is the second-year cornerback, A.J. Terrell. Now, Terrell had an absolutely fantastic game on Sunday against the New Orleans Saints, and that drew a lot of praise from head coach Arthur Smith, who we'll show you in just a couple of minutes, really sees A.J. Terrell as a cornerstone of this defense. And I think most of us do going forward alongside Grady Jarrett. Terrell's their second-best player. And when you actually look at the numbers, Terrell did not just play well on Sunday against a mediocre Saints you know, wide receiver core. He actually has been fantastic this year, and the pro football focus ranking numbers we'll show you a little bit later on, really, to me, are kind of eye-opening because I know he was playing well, but I didn't know he was playing this well. I don't think he gets a lot of credit because the Falcon defense as a whole is not necessarily that great. But another interesting point here is that Terrell is living proof you don't need a top 10 draft pick in order to get a highly successful player. I get a lot of Falcon fans who are wanting the Falcons to tank right now, and they get upset when the Falcons win games, don't understand that you can still pick in the 20s and get a really good player. And Terrell is a 16th overall draft pick. It's all about how good of a scouting department you have, how good are you at player development as well, not necessarily do you have a top 10 draft pick every single year. Here was head coach Arthur Smith's thoughts on AJ Terrell, though. I'll throw that up on the screen. Quote, he's been solid. He makes an impact on every game when he's out there. He continues to improve. He had some chances to pick the ball off, and I think that next time he probably will, but he's playing pretty solid football and 
Quote, now just how solid a football is he playing? Well, let's go to the Pro Football Focus rankings. These are all up to date here. As of week 10, he is first in yards allowed. That's like the best in the National Football League among all cornerbacks. He is first in yards per reception allowed among all cornerbacks. That's like higher than Jalen Ramsey and Xavier Howard and you know, you know, Trayvon Diggs, who's getting a lot of love right now. He is second in, overall, in, in the best overall coverage grade, and he's third in forced incompletions. I think the one thing that, I mean, really... He could only improve on a little bit more right now. Besides, obviously, I mean, his overall game can always improve. But the one thing that he's struggling with right now is intercepting the football. That's like the one, I think, part of being a cornerback that you kind of look at the elites as being very good at. You look at like Jalen Ramsey, Xavier Howard, Trayvon Diggs. They're all elite pick, uh, interceptors of the football. And Terrell's not quite there yet. But he is definitely trending in that direction of being one of the better cornerbacks in the National Football League, a position that Atlanta has not had a lot of success at over the past couple of years and really is going to be a cornerstone of this defense. And we talked about that at the beginning of this show. Terrell is going to be the one player next year alongside Grady Jarrett who you don't get rid of, right? I think everybody else besides the, the really young guys, like Richie Grant and Jalen Hawkins, are, pot are potentially uh, expendable. If you wanted to get rid of them, leave some cap space, get some draft picks. Even a guy like Deion Jones is definitely a name that could eventually be let go of this defense. But Terrell has definitely earned the right to be, a one, a great starter, and two, a cornerstone going forward. And the fact that he's balling out right now is fantastic news, and I love seeing him. Um, just, 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 just get a little credit by Arthur Smith, even though everyone inside the organization understands just how great he has been. Drop a like down below for AJ Terrell balling out, by the way. Like, he's balling out of his mind. Give this video a thumbs up right now if you guys agree. I mean, I think that the the last will and testament of the Dan Quinn era was getting us a solid cornerback. So we at least thank Dan Quinn for that and then hope we blow out Dan Quinn's defense on Sunday against the Dallas Cowboys. Um... Before we go ahead and get into the NFL playoff picture, which is important right now in terms of the rooting guide for our Falcons, I have my fresh bets of the week coming up in just a second. First, a shout-out to our friends at BetUS, who are, of course, where I go to bet all of these bets of the week, my pits of the week. Transports.com, forward slash bet Falcons. Promo code is Falcons125. Get that 125% deposit bonus whenever you first sign up, which basically means you put $100 down into your BetUS account to bet on these games. Then you use our promo code, or you use your promo code first. We put the hundred dollars down. It turns your hundred bucks, or hundred dollars, and it turns twenty-five bucks for you to go ahead and again bet on my picks of the week or your own picks of the week. Let's see mine though. Jaguars plus ten at the Colts. The Jaguars, uh, they obviously it was a fluke win against the Bills, but they're playing pretty darn good football at least defensively. I like them to at least cover against Indianapolis. Browns plus one at the Patriots is an absolute. I mean, I, it makes no sense. The Browns are going to win this football game. I think the Patriot defense is playing good right now, but the Browns plus one is, 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 is basically free money, in my opinion. Falcons, we will go there. Plus 10 at the Cowboys. When I look today at the best Bet U.S. website, plus 10? Like, even if they don't win, plus 10 covering. Come on. Seattle and Packers, the over-under is 49.5. I think even if Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson play, I think it will be a uh, a lower scoring affair. And I'm going Rams minus four at the 49ers on Monday Football. I don't know why the 49ers are giving minus or plus four right now. The Rams should blow them out. The Niners are not a good football team. Uh, give me the Rams there on Monday Night Football. Okay, those are my picks of the week. You guys want to jump in on those? Again, do with our friends at BetUS, chatsports.com, for us, BetFalcons. I'm feeling really good that I'm going to be in the green this week. So if you want to make some money, I would recommend following me. But of course, do what you will. It is your own money. All right, quickly, the NFL playoff picture here. I want to give you guys a rooting guide. But first, First, you see, of course, the Falcons sitting there at number seven, at four and four. Really, one behind number six. Like, if you win on Sunday and then uh, the Saints lose to the Titans on Sunday, technically the Falcons would be the sixth seed in the NFC playoffs. It's like, guys, we, we, I feel like just a couple of weeks ago, we were like, oh, the season is over. Oh, it's lost. We lost to the Panthers. And now, I don't know, they're sitting right there and looking pretty darn good. The rest of the teams ahead of them, not really going to be a lot of change there. I think the order will change, but the but the five teams up there are not really going to go anywhere. Obviously, Dallas might come down a little bit uh, in the NFC East, but the rest of these teams, Cardinals, Packers, you know, they're all going to be in the top five, top four in terms of their overall seeding. That means your Week 10 playoff guide, and I always do this as we get closer to uh, the actual end of the regular season, is a rooting guide, right? So here are the games that you can be watching or interested in and know who to root for and against in order to benefit the Falcons. So obviously, you want the Titans to beat the Saints on Sunday. You will want the Cardinals to lose to the Carolina Panthers. Although, honestly, let me change that around. You want the Panthers to lose to the Cardinals because the Panthers are technically on the outside look, looking in. So be a Cardinal fan this weekend. Vikings Chargers, big time Charger fan. The Vikings are hovering around the eighth seed in the NFC wild card. So get rid of them right now. Be a Charger fan. Uh, Seahawks Packers, you definitely want to root for the Packers in this one because the Green Bay Packers are going to be a top seed anyway. And Seattle technically could go on a run with Russell Wilson and try and make the wild card. And finally, Rams 49ers. Either one losing is fine, but you probably want to go ahead and root for the Rams to win this one. That way it kind of further eliminates any sort of Niner run uh, at a wild card spot as well. So those are your Week 10 playoff rooting guide. You definitely want to root against the teams that are close to the seventh seed, and that's why we went with the five games that you see on your screen right now. 
All right, ultimate for today on our Atlanta Falcons news and rumor video. Remember, mailbag video coming up later on this week. Hashtag Falcons down below in the comments section. Give me, give me some good questions. Last week's mailbag question had some decent ones. I want some really good questions down below. Use the hashtag Falcons and ask anything regarding your Falcons you possibly could want. And then, of course, hit that red subscribe button because if you ask a good question, you're not a subscriber, and I do check, then your question will get pulled for this show. It's kind of the rule we have here on the show. So go down below and subscribe and stay tuned for all of our great Falcon content coming up next couple of days and weeks. For Atlanta Falcons today, I'm Thomas Mott signing off to the rest of your day.